Thank y'all for checking out part one of the podcast. We're gonna get started on part two here. Um, kind of going over the machine, the attachments, kind of what all this machine will do for you. So, Kind of an overview here, we do have a speed lock so you can set your speeds. Um, one, two, three, and four, depending on what you want to do. Um, generally, I run the machine all the way in four, wide open and don't have any problems with it. Um, what I like about the ABI Force, it works a lot like a zero turn mower. So it's got two handles here. I can turn right, turn left. They're independent. Each one controls each wheel. I've got the throttle over here. Um, key start, just like any other mower. Up here, we're actually looking at our hydraulic controls. So we've got a stick here that will actually raise and lower this mid-mount implement. We can tilt it, and then we've also got the versatility of being able to raise and lower the back implement as well. So from there, um, kind of showing what these controls will do. Now that we've got the engine running, I've got a few more lights here. And what I like about it, it's got kind of some built-in safety features. So I've almost got like a check engine light that I'd have on my car. Um, oil pressure, so if I was to lose oil pressure, it'd let me know and as well as hydraulic fluid. So if my hydraulic fluid gets low or anything while I'm out there working, it actually lets me know that I need to stop and address an issue, which comes into play with the maintenance. But we talked about these controls a second ago. So I can actually raise or lower this. Um, I've got the tilt function. And then the one on the far right is actually my up and down for the back. So now that we've kind of talked about the operation controls, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the comfort and extra features the machine has. Um, my favorite is the cup holder here. So when I'm outside and it's 100 degrees and I'm doing ball field work, I can keep my Gatorade, water, anything like that. I've got a USB charger here. So on those days, long game day preps, I need to charge my phone. I can plug my cord in, keep it up so I can keep my tunes going. Um, they do have knee pads built in down here. So I've got a nice comfortable base while I'm operating the machine, I can leave it into it. I've ran this machine doing demos, you know, five, six hours on demo days and at the end of the day, I'm not fatigued and wore out, which I really like it because I can lean into it. They also thought this through where I've actually got a kind of a seat where I can set back and run the machine. Um, so there's several different ways we can run and operate the machine. So now that we've talked and kind of talked about all the operation features, uh, we'll go jump into what it would look like if you had an actual laser package on this machine, which is kind of the bread and butter of the ABI force. I don't have to be a, a skilled operator to run this machine. I can set my laser up turn it on, I flip the box into autos, which would normally be mounted in this area here, and I can do a whole baseball field and not have to touch these hydraulic controls. Um, that's a really useful feature, um, being on demos and stuff. I've had some guys that's just not, you know, not comfortable running the machine using it manually. So I was able to set a laser up for them, flip on autos and say, hey, have at it. Um, and they really enjoy that because they don't have to work the machine. Um, adding to that, one thing the ABI has kind of added onto it up here in the mid mount, these locks. So if I'm a new operator, I may not know exactly what depth I need to be at, what pitch works best, but you know, as an owner of a company or a town manager, park and rec manager, whoever it may be, I can set this machine up so I can have an intern run it, you know, my new entry level guy. And these can actually clip on the hydraulic cylinder. So what that does is that allows the operator just to push the handle like we talked about earlier, and it's gonna go to that same consistent depth every single time. I don't have to worry about him going too deep, getting into some fabric that's maybe below the field, um, you know, messing up the pitch, because that does come into play when we work a box blade is we want it to be at a certain pitch. That way I can just set it up, he can go to work, and I don't have to worry about it. ABI's added some more features other than just the locks to make this machine a very user-friendly, easy to use, um, laser grading machine. Uh, one thing I really like when I'm doing demos is this um, depth gauge here, or sight indicator that you may hear it called. Um, when I set this up, I'm gonna make it nice and flat here. And what that does, that tells me I'm on grade. So as I go along in grade, if I've got a lot of cut, this pipe's gonna come up higher above it and that tells me I got cut. If I'm in an area where I've got fill, it's gonna be below it. Um, me as an operator, um, I like to be able to see that. I can keep a visual indication on what I've got going on. The laser tells us all this stuff too, but it's just a hard physical point. Another thing that's nice about it from a management standpoint, if I'm out on the field and I had a crew working or anything like that, I could actually look over at the machine and kind of keep an eye on where they're at. If they've got a lot of cut, they got a lot of feel. I use it when we do demos with our sales reps. While I'm out there getting a new customer running, I can kind of glance and see what's going on and keep an eye on it without having to you know, be right here in the operator's compartment with him. Um, they do have another depth gauge over here. It works really good to survey a field. So you know, if I'm, you know, I'm doing rehab work for people um, and I just like, kind of want to go out and see what we got going on, I can actually set this depth gauge on grade run the Vibroflex and it'll let me know I got an inch of cut, an inch of fill. It's a very good visual indicator. So as you can see, they've kind of thought things through where I can look, you know, center, right, my box, my laser. I've got several point of views. So when I'm running this machine at all times, I have some sort of indication of I'm on grade, I've got more fill, 
um, what's going on with the machine. So we got the machine configured in the basic landscape package. So I'll kind of start talking about some of the things. And we don't have all the landscape attachments on this machine today. That's kind of the nice thing about it is the versatility and what all you can change up. Um, so up front, you can actually mount that seeder. So it will do fertilizer, seed, um, anything that you would broadcast spread. Some things I like about the spreader is it's got directional control. So I can set it to throw left, throw right. Um, I've also got different settings on there. So I can know that, hey, if I'm putting out this type of seed, I can put it on a setting one and drive it this speed control like we talked about earlier up here in the operator compartment. And I'm getting that same consistent rate every single time. That way I'm not over broadcasting or under broadcasting what I'm trying to get. It's going to save me time and money as well. And the nice thing about that seeder is I've got all these other attachments. So I'm kind of, I can do a seeding in one pass. I could actually tear the ground up, get it set, put the seeder on it, cold to pack it. And I don't have to switch out machines, switch out implements. I can basically pull up at somebody's house, back this off the trailer, have everything I have right here, do a seeding job, load it back up onto the next one. So moving on to the mid mount, kind of sticking with that landscape package is I've got these stealth blades on here right now. I've got them in transport mode in the video, but if we's not actually working, I can drop them down. Um, if the camera can see this, I don't know. There's two different holes here, so I can run different depths. The ABI comes with seven of them, so I can run seven and get a whole lot of tillage going on. Um, or I can space it out and run every other one, run four of them, um, three of them, just depends on what I'm trying to do. Um, I know earlier we was in the podcast, we was talking about the versatility on landscape and that little bitty area between the curb and the sidewalk. I may not be able to fit all seven, but hey, I can put three right in the middle, straddle that and rip it up. So moving from that kind of the typical workflow, that's what I would do is I'd run those stealth blades, get the ground tilled up, get everything broke up, compaction. And then I can move into actually running the rock sifter. The rock sifter works really good to make my spoil piles. I'm not having to be out there with a rake, raking everything out, trying to get those spoil piles up. It's got this, basically these tooth bars here, which is gonna kind of break up the dirt. And it's got a really tight spacing, so it allows those rocks and stuff to kind of set on top and allows me to push them. What I like about the implement is they put the wings on them down here. So these wings actually allow me to carry those rocks and stuff so I can push them up next to a concrete edge for my spoil piles, anything like that. And then what I like to do is uh, normally I'll take the box plate off. And if you look, we've got a rake back here. I'll kind of set it at the right angle where that rake's running along and it's kind of smoothing the ground as I go along collecting rocks. So right there in one pass, I'm collecting rocks. I'm smoothing it out. Another attachment that we do have that we use in landscaping and baseball is the actual box plate, which is mounted on this gray rake. The box plate's really good if I do get out of that spot and I need to laser grade a customer's front yard to make it nice and smooth. I can take all these things off, I can set my laser up, and I can laser grade, and now I've just laser graded somebody's front yard, not had to bring a different machine in, didn't have to bring my skid steer in with some sort of box blade on it, tractor, anything like that. I have it all set up here where I can, I can basically rip it up for compaction, I can get the rocks, debris and stuff up, um, get it tilled up, ready for seed, get it smoothed out, and we got a front mount seeder, so I can put the seed down while I'm there. So. So while we're talking about all the mid mount, uh, one thing I really like about the machine and that's what really stands the ABI force apart from its competition is these um, patent springs that they have. What those springs do, um, basically if I get into a hard spot and I've got a lot of cut going on, these springs will actually compress. Yeah, I'm not taking out all my dirt at one time, but I'm not bogging the machine down, spinning wheels, causing making a bigger mess. Um, I'm not hitting a hard spot or a root or something and throwing my operator over the front of the machine. It allows it to kind of pick it up and float over those hard spots. So if you've ever seen any of the ABI Force videos where it's actually been in action, whether it's our website or ABI's website, you can actually really see how these springs compress when they get into that. Um, and what we do is we actually make several passes and circles going around it to smooth everything out. Watch one of those videos, you'll see these springs actually compress. Um, once I get into that final phase where I'm getting ready to really make everything fine tune, um, get it within an eighth of an inch, I've actually got some lock pins here. I can lock those springs in put that nice final pass on it, make it look nice and clean, run my root rake or rake on the back and basically spread out my tire tracks. I don't have anything going on at that point. So, Speaking of tires, um, what the ABI Force comes with is the Twills. Um, they're really nice tires. It makes for a smooth ride. You actually get better traction the way they're designed. Um, they're airless. So if I'm out on these construction sites where they've been building houses and nails and everything else has been thrown out, I don't have to worry about running over one Having a flat tire, costing me downtime, anything like that. Maintenance on them is great. Um, I've had really good traction with them. I've taken this machine on some demos through some places I didn't think it was gonna go through. It went right through it, no problem. Never skipped a beat, so. So now that we've kind of talked about the operator's compartment, the front, the mid mount, moving to the back, um, you've got several options for a back attachments, but since we've got it set up as landscape, that's what we're talking about. So this goes on the back of the machine. This goes along with that landscape setup. 
As you can see, it's got a tooth bar on here, similar to what we have up front, where it would actually kind of break that dirt clods up. We've got the rake on the back to smooth it out. Um, what I like about this attachment is it's actually behind me. So I can be running the stealth blades in front of me, really tearing that compaction up, getting everything going, and I can use this on the back to smooth it all out, cover my tire tracks. Then I can come back and make my last final pass with the cedar um, that we talked about earlier on the front. And this is just one of the attachments that I would use for landscape. And we've also got a rear mounted Colta packer that has that same spring compression built into it. So that's what I would do is I would run my stealth blades, um, run this behind me to kind of get my seed bed ready to go. Then I'd pull up to my truck, unhook this, hook my Colta packer up, and now I can seed and Colta pack at the same time. So we talked about the rock sifter that we have on the mid mount here. Um, the big question is, what do you do with those spoil piles once you get them done? Have I got to shovel them in a bucket and put them in my truck? No, what ABI did is they come out with a rear mounted scoop that's got an electric motor on it that actually hooks in back here. It lifts up to 300 pounds. So I can actually get all that spoil pile into one pile. I can back up into it, pick it up, and I can haul it off site, dump it wherever I need to dump it at and get rid of it. So I'm not out there making seven trips in my wheelbarrow pushing 300 pounds all day long. I'm using this same machine, not having to get off, leaving that rake and shovel in the truck, which is what I really like coming from that side of the world. So we talked about everything you need to do to actually get a seed bed ready and put seed down. What about maintaining that, that yard that we've planted? Um, ABI actually has a mid-mount aerator. It comes in a core or a slit aerator. Everything mounts underneath. It's very easy to change it in and out, so I can go do all my aerating jobs in the fall when they come up after I've been doing my you know, sp spring maintenance, stuff like that. So that wraps up everything on the landscaping package. We're gonna jump over and start talking about all the attachments and features and workflows that you can do on a baseball field next. All right, so now jumping over to the baseball side of the ABI force. Um, like we did with the landscaping stuff, we'll kind of start at the front and our work our way back. With the baseball, there's nothing on the front other than our weight saddles here. Um, Mid-mount, we've got a lot of versatility on a baseball field as far as mid-mount. Dealing with the compaction side of things, we've got our stealth blades, same thing we used in the landscaping package. Um, we've also got a set of profile blades, which work really good to kind of go in and tear the ground up, take those you know, grass and stuff that's popped up over the winter time when I'm not playing on the field. Um, and then we've got our tooth bar here. All those are very good for compaction, getting it broke up, getting it ready to actually do our laser grading on it or just general field maintenance. Once you get your field broke up with all of our compaction tools, then we're gonna actually move into that laser grading piece. We're gonna use the same things on the machine. We'll actually have our depth gauge set here, our sight gauge, our laser box set up. Um, and what we're gonna do is we'll actually use the box blade in that application when we're laser grading the field. And what this does, this allows us to go through and take out our high spots, fill in our low spots, and move that dirt around the way we need it to be moved around using just a dual slope laser set up on the field to really control this machine. Um, it's really nice because as an operator, I'm not having to sit here and constantly adjust my lever hoping that I've got it right. I'm actually trusting that laser. It's keeping me within an eighth of an inch and I'm really getting that dirt moved, um, making quick work of what I need to, um, taking the guesswork out of it. So once we get everything done with the box blade, um, we do have a half ton roller that mounts under there. So anytime you're moving dirt and we're filling in dirt, we want to pack, compact that dirt back down so it doesn't wash away, blow away, cause soft spots in my field. With this roller, it really allows me to get out there and roll everything down and make a nice clean finish when I get done doing my laser grading. So that was kind of an overview of the heavy duty work that you would do on a baseball field. You know that um, after season, getting ready for next season, really getting that field fine tuned for the year, um, letting it lay there for the winter time. Um, what we'll do now is we're going to move into actually the maintenance piece of it. So how do I want to do my everyday um, game prep, um, just, you know, routine maintenance that a baseball field requires. So one thing that ABI has is a mid-mount Vibraflex, works a lot like a nail drag. What I like about the mid-mount attachments is I can actually put down pressure on this thing and, you know, I can nail drag the field an inch, a half an inch, whatever, however deep I need to go. We can do that with our laser. So there's a lot of guys out there that do their routine maintenance with this by setting their laser up every single day, putting the mid-mount on it and going out there and dragging the field. Even though it's not a box blade where it carries dirt, the Vibraflex is going to carry a little bit of dirt to kind of fill in those lows and highs. So I'm constantly keeping my field in that great playable shape after I spent all the time doing the laser grading on it. Um, some other features on this Vibraflex is I can actually change out my pin size. So you can go with a larger diameter nail or a smaller diameter nail, however you want to configure that machine. The mid-mount's a little different, kind of jumping ahead to the rear one, is the rear one's only a single stack of nails, whereas the mid-mount is a double stack of nails, which you can see on this attachment here. 
if we got rain and I got a game that afternoon, I can go up there and open the field up, air it out without causing a lot of problems. So moving to the rear of the machine and what all attachments we have, we've got the rigid drag mat. Um, some things on the rigid drag mat, it actually has a leveling bar on the front of it right here. So, you know, if my field's been played on all weekend and I've got spots that needs to be filled in, I've got high spots, anything like that, this works really well at basically taking that loose dirt, filling back in my low spots, and dragging the field at the same time. Um, this is probably one of our most popular attachments that we sell when we go out to do demos. Guys really like it. Um, some things I like about it is you can actually pick the drag mat up because it's mounted back here on the back of it. So I can pick it up and just drive right off the field. I don't have to get up and throw it in the back of my gator, anything like that. It's back there. Um, ABI, we've talked a lot about versatility and how they thought everything through. Um, one thing ABI does is every single attachment comes with its own top link. Where that comes into play is once I kind of get my pitch that I really like, I don't have to worry about changing it every single time I switch implements. It's already there. I can back up, throw my pins in it, and go straight to work. I don't have to worry about changing top links out, readjusting them, all that. Makes it really efficient when you're on game day getting ready. Um, we've also got a fine finish broom. We've got a cocoa mat and then an XD drag mat. They've got a pro finisher. There's all sorts of attachments we can put back here. It really depends on your application and the material type you have on your field. Another thing that we can actually put on the back for baseball is this rear mount Vibraflex. Um, it works just like the front mount Vibraflex, except for I can't put the down pressure on it. And like I said earlier, it's only a single stack of nails. I like to run the rear Vibraflex while I'm actually laser grading. It's just a personal preference that I found out while doing demos and stuff. Kind of helps to keep things broke up, tilled up as I go along. So that was kind of all your attachments that you would use to do rehab work or maintenance. Um, another thing we have to do on a baseball field is edging that grass outline. The nice thing about ABI is they've developed an edger that actually goes on this machine. So it'd be mounted on the right side. It's just a regular disc blade. They put you a steer indicator on here. So I can actually go out there and I can paint that three foot offset for my radius for my field. I can drive the machine, it goes along and it cuts it. What the nice feature about the edger on here is I can actually control the tilt and actually get down pressure on it and cut the depth that I need to cut. So if I'm in hard ground, I can put more pressure on it and it's gonna cut deeper for me. Or if I'm in some soft ground, I can let some of that pressure off. Um, it comes with a wheel over here to kind of balance out the box blade so you can get really nice clean edges. Um, and going along with that edger is they have another blade that would mount in here. So once I run that edger, then I can take that blade, follow my same lines and kind of roll that dirt back over. So now I've got my grass pole flipped over. If you got your scoop, we could back back up and pick all that up and carry it off the field. And then one thing I like to do um, once I get done edging is I like to put my roller on. That way I can roll that um, grass edge that I just cut back down to keep my nice root contact with the soil, not cause any problems. So hopefully this shows you everything that the ABI can do and the versatility with the different attachments that we have. If you wanna learn more or schedule a demo, reach out to us at the number on the screen. Thank y'all for checking out our podcast. We'll see you next time.